Welcome. In this session, we are going to learn what is uh, vacuuming fundamentals in PostgreSQL. As the name says, vacuuming, it is actually going to do the vacuum of PostgreSQL. So as usual, everything is there in a notepad and we will walk through this. So one of the fundamental thing about the uh, databases or any uh, software product is if you do the regular maintenance of those products, uh, which is the suggested one, the performance will be good. The same goes with the PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL suggests you should do the periodic maintenance so as to avoid any kind of overhead which comes when you don't do the, uh, the maintenance activity. One of them is the auto vacuum. As the name says, auto vacuum is a, a vacuum process which removes the dead spaces, which is in the form of the tuples uh, from the table and it improves the uh, storage utilization and uh, it removes the dead rows, which are also known as the tuples. Uh, one of the thing uh, which is uh, for the Postgre is to to maintain the MVCC, which is multi-version concurrency control. Whenever a row from a particular table is uh, updated or it is deleted, it is, and if the same row is being used by some other concurrent session, which is going to read, and the other session which is going to update or delete that particular row, in that case, just to maintain the uh, the uh, lower category of uh, the locking mechanism what it does it, it uh, retains the previous version of the data in the table in the form of uh, the tuples and uh, th that that will be visible to your uh, SQL query uh, the active transaction till the time they are in use the moment the data or uh, that particular row is updated and uh, uh, the concurrent session which is uh, uh, which is reading the data of the older one it is it is marked as the frozen one and it is called as the tuples what happens over a period of time that particular the number of such dead uh, rows or uh, they are known as the tuples they will keep on increasing fundamentally or basically they are not going to get removed automatically somebody has to remove this and uh, there is a process which is called as uh, auto vacuum which is available as a background process in postgreSQL it is going to do all the stuff which is known as the vacuuming so what vacuum does it it, it reclaims the storage by removing the uh, the unused or uh, the uh, not the unused i'll say the dead tuples or the unwanted rows which have been actually uh, marked as deleted or removed or updated from the table so if you don't remove those uh, rows what it will do is uh, over a period of time it will keep on accumulating the size uh, in your table and the performance of the table will go slow if you are doing the vacuuming, which is a background process known as the auto vacuum, then what it will do is it will periodically check the tables. It will check if there are unwanted uh, dead rows which are not supposed to be there and it is going to clean them. And it is a very frequent activity. Uh, it will check for some conditions. Say, for example, if there are 50 tuples or if 20% of the total rows of the tables are, uh, are uh, changed, and that means there will be so many numbers of the dead tuples in your table. And through some way, you are supposed to remove it. Postgre very, very strongly suggests you should not disable the auto vacuum process unless or until you have done some deep research which says some of the tables which are very, very large in size, it is very volatile in nature. The number of the rows which are updated, they are very high and they are not able to keep up with the, uh, the kind of auto vacuum uh, thresholds which are there. So in that case, to particular table, you can do the vacuuming uh, according to your requirement. So that's just the basic. So why is the vacuum required? A vacuum is required to remove the tuples from your table and uh, it is going to release that space back to the table so that the new rows can utilize that. And there is other way also in, in some of the scenarios, if you use the full vacuum, which, uh, in that case, it is going to release the storage back to the operating system. In that case, you can use that. This is one 
one of the reason why vacuum is required this is removing the tuples the second is uh, the data in your table if the statistics uh, is not properly generated in that case the query planner which is which plans the execution execution plan of your query in that case it will not have the enough data it will not able to generate the proper uh, sql plan for your query in that case the the performance of the sql query can go down the third one is known as the visibility map in that case uh, if the visibility map is not properly updated then uh, it is going to impact your your query as well the last but not the least it is about the transaction id wraparound which says if your transactions in in your database they cross 200 millions then you need to perform the vacuum now we'll talk about what are the different types of vacuum. There are two types of vacuum. One is called as the full vacuum and another is called as the standard vacuum. By default, the vacuum which runs uh, using the auto vacuum launcher, it, it does the standard vacuum. What it does, it removes the dead rows and those uh, dead tuples, they are given back to your tables which can be used for the, the rows which are being inserted or, or the new rows. But this will not be given back to the operating system for so that you will not see the any space which is released at the operating system but for the production environment or any environment wherein postgre is very active you are supposed to use the standard vacuum because it is not going to interfere with the normal operation of the table because it is a recurring activity every time it is going to check whether uh, if we go with the default setting which says that 20 percent of the table data must have changed or 50 uh, tuples would have generated since the last uh, execution of the auto vacuum process in that case it is going to execute and also any it is not going to uh, to interfere with your normal application which is interacting with the database any sort of insert update delete whatever operations it is it is not going to interfere only there is just one case in case your database uh, table definition changes in that case uh, the uh, when the definition is changing it is going to put a exclusive lock and in that case a standard go vacuum is not going to work but in case if you go with the another type of the vacuum which is known as the full vacuum in that case it is going to create another copy temporary copy of the table and it uh, one of the thing is you might already be suffering with the uh, storage uh, uh, scarcity and if you try to do a full vacuum that means it is going to be a uh, kind of complete downtime for the application you don't have the storage and it is going to pick up all your uh, all your cpus your uh, so it's not suggested to do unless or until you have a very strong reason which says we should be doing this, uh, this because uh, because of uh, our uh, auto vacuuming is not able to suffice our requirement. And one of the thing observation is whenever uh, the vacuum process is uh, running the the IO on your subsystem is going to be uh, to be high and uh, this what it does it, it slows down your application. So how uh, the uh, disk is storage is getting uh, released? One is if it is a standard vacuum, the storage will be given to the table, and uh, the free spaces can be utilized by the uh, the new rows. The other one is full vacuum, which is lying uh, like creating a, a new copy of the table, but it, it is going to completely lock your your table, and in that case, the application cannot use that particular table for the activity, so it is considered as a complete downtime. But full vacuum, it is going to re create a fresh copy of the table wherein all that tuples will be removed but the suggestion is not to use the full vacuum you go with the auto vacuum which is suggested and you can tweak around the different parameters which are available and one of the thing is what is the difficulty with doing the vacuum according to the fixed schedule uh, if you try to do uh, vacuuming according to a fixed schedule and your application is again active, let's say 
I disabled the auto vacuum. I enabled the uh, the manual vacuum. I put the vacuum command in a cron job every night at 2200 hours. It is executing, but because of the lot of application activity, it is uh, I'm I'm not able to perform uh, the complete vacuum process in that, and the window is over. That means the number of data tuples will keep on increasing, and this may lead to a scenario wherein you have to do the full vacuum that will be the only case because you have you have already lost the chance to reclaim the uh, the storage uh, using uh, auto vacuum process when to schedule it if you are not using the auto vacuum and if you wanted to use the uh, the uh, manual vacuum process in that case it is advised to use it when your application activity is is low and in that case uh, you have to ensure that the table is not being uh, uh, utilized uh, so if you are going with the full vacuum in that case you have to make sure that uh, the uh, the you have uh, enough storage to perform the vacuuming processes And one other thing is if if there are some tables which are going for very high delete so let's say all the contents of the table will be deleted so it, it is recommended though this this may not be a very a usual scenario but it may be possible that the entire table content is uh, deleted so the entire content will go back to the dead tuples and they will occupy the space and uh, they, you will see the increasing number, uh, the size increase because the dead tuples uh, relies over there. The second important uh, function of your uh, auto vacuum process is it uh, updates the uh, the planner statistics. So planner statistics is updated when you perform the auto vacuum. So when you perform the auto vacuum process, it does the it executes the analyze command on the tables in the database. So so it means when uh, uh, when the uh, analyze commands happen. So your your uh, your planner will be knowing that uh, what is the uh, statistics of my table and that leads to the good performance because the execution plan will be according to the statistics which is generated on the table and it is highly recommended your your table should be analyzed properly and it is more important when your your uh, your database is highly volatile the tables are highly uh, utilized in insert update or delete kind of operations so you have something called as the uh, visibility map or uh, vm uh, which is like uh, uh, it is going to uh, each heap relation has a, a visibility map which keeps tracks of which pages contains only the tuples which are known to be visible for all the active transactions so uh, it is stored along the main relational uh, data in a separate uh, fork so uh, what visibility map actually stores it, it it stores the heap page information that means uh, the uh, a, if it has the frozen uh, what do you say the tuple so it is not going to be visible because the query uh, which was using the active uh, transaction or uh, the table it's it it's already completed and uh, you can check it using the pz underscore uh, visibility module and it can show you the required information and the last most important thing about uh, the vacuuming is it helps in preventing the uh, uh, transaction id wraparound failure so because of the mvcc transaction uh, what happens is uh, in case of PostgreSQL, if if you believe the transactions in your uh, PostgreSQL is going to be more than four million transactions, then you have to be very very careful and you have to set some of couple of the parameters to avoid any kind of loss of the data. So this is very very important. So just to recap, there are four important uh, functions uh, in PostgreSQL for vacuum. I uh, will go them one by one again. So one is the you can recover the storage using the vacuum command. Uh, if you are doing it manually, 
which is not suggested you should go for the auto vacuum second is uh, it helps in generation of the statistics on the table the third is the visibility map which uh, helps in speeding of the index only scanning and the last which is related to the loss of the data due to the uh, multi exact id wrap around so this is just a basic about the the vacuum why we should uh, prefer doing it in uh, another session we will see some more details about it and how to tune it further i hope this is going to help and uh, thank you